something that you bring up uh, uh, pretty often that always resonates with me is the role that creativity could, could literally play in saving the earth, or at least in saving humanity, that if we're not creative with our solutions. You touched on this briefly when you talked about the ability to harness disaster instead of letting it kind of pour over us. Um, but I just would like you to kind of expound on that, on your theory of, of how important is creativity in terms of the future of the human race? Yeah, I think, I've said this in different ways before, but I'll, 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 I think it bears repeating. If there's an impending disaster, what is your first reaction? Is it run? You know, stockpile toilet paper and water bottles? Is that your first reaction? If, if the asteroid's coming, is that the first thing you think to do? Rather than, how can we deflect? Hmm, we're living in an earthquake zone. How can we, you, you can make an earthquake-proof building, or you might put in research to prevent earthquakes. How's that for a solution? When I think of solutions, I think of things that completely solve the problem. Is your solution to acid rain, an acid rain-proof umbrella? <laughs> what is, how are you thinking about the future? And when you live in an innovation nation, where is the culture, as I said in my talk, the centers of innovation are not in the same place forever. And they can rise high, but then they fade. Why do they fade? Why do they rise up in the first place? And it always has to do with what is your culture value? So I'm an acute observer of trends in culture. Because some trends are away from innovation. And if it's away from innovation and creativity, then solutions to problems that you already know exist, and especially solutions to problems that you don't know will yet arise, can be the unweaving of your civilization. And I don't want to be in that world for that to happen. And so creativity, what, what does it mean to be creative? It means there's something you've never seen before, and you put it together into something that is brand new that others had not seen. You saw what they saw, but now you've created a new idea, a new product, a new brand, a new path to solve a problem. Not everyone does that. Uh, let's be realistic. Not everyone cares deeply about it. I, I understand. But for those who do, their activities should be cherished. These are the people we should hold up high. We should build statues to those people we used to. Those are the folks who advanced frontiers, the inventors, the explorers, the discoverers, the innovators. These are the people who shape civilization. If you don't cult cultivate and nurture that, you might as well just move back to the cave, because that's where we're going to end up without it. And I'll ask uh, one more, and I'm sure you're probably tight on time, but, uh, but we talk a lot in marketing about the importance of creative learning uh, to be more scientific, to use data, to learn from it, and it's been a hard push, but the industry's kind of gotten there. But what do you think is the importance of scientists learning to be more creative and, and going the other way and adopting that? Yeah, so scientists, the most successful scientists are the most creative ones. There is a difference, though. You, I think you can be creative in the, in the world of society, and yes, your ultimate jury and judge and executioner is, is it successful in, in the world? Okay. I got that. In the physical world, the jury, judge, and executioner are the laws of nature themselves. So we, we don't have complete creative latitude. We can't just create something, assert it's true, if it doesn't, if it's not consistent with how nature behaves. So we're a little more constrained than the pure artist who has what is essentially an infinite palette of thoughts to draw upon, to create a new place that can draw people to it. So I, uh, I can say without hesitation, the best scientists are the ones that are the most creative, that are not deducing their next thought based on something that came before. They step away from what came before and put together ideas in a whole new way. There's no question about it that these are your best scientists. You can still be a good scientist without creativity, but you're not going to be the best. 
you're not going to leave the field. So, and by the way, uh, creativity, I think, would exist in any profession. You can be a creative lawyer. Creative understanding of the defense case that you're going to build. You could be, obviously, a creative poet, journalist. Uh, I think creativity is not owned by one branch of humanity relative to another. All of them benefit. And maybe that's the one unique thing we bring to the table as humans. We can create something tomorrow that doesn't exist today. I don't know any other animals that can do that. Or even have the premise that it's possible. Not only that, we can create something and someone else can learn from it. You don't have to recreate it yourself. I can write it down. I can publish it. And you read it. Then you can stand in this new place that I just created and then create something else that maybe I didn't see. These are the, this is the beauty of being human and not being a toad or, or some other creature in the world. Why? We should exploit that fact. If you don't stimulate creativity, you are abusing our genetic code. 